Well, if you remember earlier this year, we talked with a man who's now in New Mexico about at the time his upcoming journey through the Northwest Passage. Well, it has been a few months. Was it successful? Did he make it safely back? Let's find out. Find out about the adventure with Michael Johnson. Good morning, Michael. Good morning. It's good to see you. It's good to be here in the warmth of New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> the warmth of it, you know, it's funny because people are complaining right now because we're in the 30s. Mm -hmm. But we'll talk about cold Northwest Passage. Uh, first of all, what is it and exactly what kind of temperatures did you see up there? Well, um, in the Northwest Passage basically goes from the um, Atlantic to the Pacific or vice versa, from the Arctic Circle to the Arctic Circle. And it's approximately 4,600 miles long. Okay, so it's it's way up there, it's up in the north, there. and that is basically what uh, you and just a few other people every season sail. Well, attempt to. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't open up at all. So um, it's uh, even with global warming, uh, it doesn't completely open up. And this year, they actually reported that part of it didn't open up at all. Although we got through, so I guess we squeezed through the cracks. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about when you're up there, it, the, the kind of boat you're on. It, it's it's not an icebreaker. We're not talking about sailing through the Northwest Passage on a big ship, no, but you're no. actually sailing. Yeah, we're in a very small 44-foot schooner, uh, which uh, we have a, a total number of people on board of about three at the My most. My goodness. Uh, okay, that's a picture of it right there. It is obviously a glacier behind you? Yeah, that's uh, well, that was in the eastern portion last year of the Northwest Passage. Okay, so tell me, like, what goes on when you get up to these big chunks of ice up there? You talked about some people say it really didn't open up. Obviously, you, you found a way through. How'd you do that? Well, we, uh, we were stuck in Cambridge Bay, which was about the halfway point. Uh, we got that far last year in, in 2013. That was a, um, uh, from Greenland to uh, what would be directly, say, over eastern Montana. Okay. We started there this year. We went up there in July. Uh, we didn't get out of there because of the ice until the beginning of August. So the season was fairly short this year, very short. Wow. I uh, mean, we saw it in the pictures there. How gorgeous is what you're seeing up there? Oh, it can be spectacular. You know, I mean, it's uh, there are no trees. You're obviously above the tree line. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those those bergs that you saw pictures of are, uh, you know, they're glaciers off the Greenland ice cap. But uh, over in the rest of the Arctic, um, the western portion of the Northwest Passage, you would primarily see uh, sea ice, which could block all those uh, labyrinth of channels going through there. Okay. There are approximately five different possibilities of going through the Northwest Passage. Uh, so these, these, these pieces of ice break up at a certain time of year for a short time, often. Sometimes they don't open at all, and then they close and move around with the currents and the winds. Okay. So, uh, so five possibilities. You got the ice, you got the wind, uh, I'm sure you got waves, so much more. How many people try this every year to sail it? And particularly this year, how many such as yourself were successful? Well, there was an uh, Alaskan um, boat that was uh, in Cambridge Bay with me, where we started from this year, and he was attempting to go to the east. And uh, he made it to Greenland, uh, we made it to Alaska, Nome, Alaska, and uh, three other boats got through, sailing vessels got through to the west. Uh, two British and one Australian, and I think there was one other vessel that got through to Greenland, and that was all. I think 13 vessels, I was, I was, it was reported to me that 13 vessels turned back. Wow. Too much ice. I mean, how dangerous is this, and is there any point you're on this track and you're like, you know, I don't know, we're going to make it, I don't know what's going to happen here. Well, it's a, it's a risky proposition. You can do everything right up there, and it's still a crapshoot whether you're going to get through or not. I mean, people go up there and they attempt to get through. There have been more in recent years, but it's still a, a difficult passage. There, I think we are something like the 209th vessel to ever pass through there. That includes icebreakers. And I think in terms of sailing vessels, we're about the 87th. Um, you're kidding. Roald Edmondson, the Norwegian, was the first uh, vessel to ever pass through there. Uh, and that was in 1903-1906. Okay. So, uh, uh, not too many. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, wh why'd you do this? Are you ever going to do it again? Well, I, I don't know that. I probably won't do it again, not certainly the same way. Uh, why do we do it? Uh, I'm reminded of a question when we were down around Cape Horn when someone said, if you have to ask that question, you probably wouldn't understand the answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. These are some of the, the pictures you took? This was a place, Beachy Island, with the t uh, gravestones. That was a whaling base up there. It's now okay. abandoned. It was about 1900. Uh, this was off the coast of Alaska. Uh, when we were trying to get around. Is that uh, sunrise or sunset? That, Do you was, remember? A that was a sunrise. That yeah. was a sunrise. And this is off of Point Barrow. Uh, and that's all the ice from, was, I guess, the, that, the sea wash that came up on the boat? That was just a snowstorm that night. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that, that, uh, that produced all that snow there. Uh, <laughs> 
Getting My around goodness. Alaska was particularly difficult because that's a very shallow area. There's very little protection along that coast. Okay. So getting from um, you know the Yukon border with Alaska all the way around Point Barrow, the northernmost point in the United States, yeah. and on down to uh, Nome, it's approximately a thousand miles, and there's not a lot of cover in there for anchoring or taking any protection. Uh, that means it's you and the elements. Yeah, you, you've got ice that sometimes open a quarter there, about 50 or 60 miles wide. So you've got ice on the shore side, you've got ice off, offshore about 50 miles. If you get north wind, it's like a vice closing and you're in the middle. So oh, you're just running a gauntlet wow. and hoping that doesn't happen. Well, we're certainly glad you made it. Uh, oh, real quick, what's your next expedition, next journey? Well, you know? we're in Nome, Alaska now, and uh, we've still got the Bering Sea to cross, so we've got to get down through the Aleutians, and that can be a nasty piece of water, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll try to get through that. We'll go back up there in July when the ice okay. gets up. Next summer. Yeah. Next summer. Michael Johnson. Thank it's an honor for me to shake your hand and say thanks for coming in and nice congratulations on sailing that. Again, maybe 200 ships <laughs> ever in the history have done that. You want to find out more about his story, head to our website at krqe.com. We'll be right back.